In part two on matrices, we looked at operations on matrices, addition, scalar multiplication, and we started with the product of two matrices. So we defined what the product, how to find the product of two matrices, when we can find it, and now we're just going to look at some examples and some properties of matrix multiplication. So let's take a look. Firstly, we said the size is important. So do yourself a favor and write the size down. 3 by 2 and 2 by 4. So we can multiply the matrices if the number of columns of the first one is the same as the number of rows in the second one. So this product does exist. Then my resultant matrix is the number of rows on the first one by the number of columns in the second one. So this gives me a big 3 by 4 matrix. All right, so three rows, four columns. So I start with row one, be systematic. I use row one of my first matrix and take it the inner product with column one for row one, column one. Inner product with column two for row two, column two. And so we carry on. So first row is inner product with the first column, one times zero minus one times one is minus one. First row is inner product with the second column, one plus one is two. First row is inner product with the third column, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2 is minus 4. First row, th fourth column, 3, time plus naught is 3. All right, now calculation errors do happen, so you've got to keep track of what you're doing and take note you've got to make sure you're not adding or multiplying incorrectly. Second one, now I'm looking at row 2 in my result, so I'm taking the inner product between row 2 and column 1. 1 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1 is 2. Row 2, column 2. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Row 2, column 3. Minus 2 plus 4 is 2. Row 2, column 4. 3 plus 2 plus 2 times 0 is 3 times plus 0 is 3. All right. And now I'm at the last row. So I'm using my last row and taking the inner product with those four columns. And I've got 0 minus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 minus 6 minus 6 is minus 12. And 9 plus 0 is 9. And that's the product of the two matrices. Now, just take a look here. Would it have been possible to multiply the matrices in the other direction? If I said, what is 0, 1, minus 2, 3, times 1, minus 1, 2, naught, oh, not times, times 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 3, minus 3. So basically what I'm checking is matrix multiplication commutative. Is A times B the same as B times A? Well, let's first look at the size. 2 times by 4, 3 by 2. That product does not exist, it's not defined. Never mind checking if it's equal, it's not even defined. So take note, in general for matrices, A times B is not necessarily equal to B times A, which is a property that real numbers have, but matrices does not. Okay, next one. I've got a one row, three columns, by a three row, two columns. Can I multiply them? Yes, because those numbers are the same. You might notice it's, e it's easier to write the sizes there because then you can visually see if it works. And my resultant matrix will be a one by two. So one row and two columns. That's quite a small one. So I first start with my first row, and it, this is just a row matrix. First row, first columns, inner product, two minus two plus 12 is 12. First row, second column. I'm done with that first column. First row, second column, I've got minus 1 plus 6 plus 15. So I've got minus 1 plus 6, so 6 minus 1 is 5, plus 15 is 20. And there's my resultant matrix. 1 by 2 matrix, 1 row, 2 columns. Not very impressive, it's small, but that's the product. All right, let's move on. Let's look at this one. Some interesting ones. I've got a 1, 2, 3 by 2 matrix multiplied by a 2 by 2 matrix. Can I multiply them? Yes, my result will be 3 by 2. But now I want you to notice this is a special matrix. That's the identity 2 by 2 matrix. So let's see what happens. 
First row, I multiply by the first column. 1, 0 is 1. First row, I multiply by the second column. 0, minus 1. Done with the first row. Second row, first column. 1. Second row, second column. 0, 2. Done with the second row. Third row, inner product with the first column. 3, 0, so it's 3. Second column, 0, minus 3, it's minus 3. Please notice that I'm back with the matrix that I started with. I multiplied this matrix with the identity 2 by 2 matrix, and it stayed the same. Now, generally, A times IN, I'm going to get my matrix A back. We are, when I'm writing it like this, I'm assuming that all the sizes are right, that the sizes do work out, but that is a general. And you can test if I multiply my identity matrix with this matrix A. It won't work because the sizes aren't right. But if I've got matrices that are the correct sizes, that will also give me the matrix A. So when we write a property like this, we're assuming we're talking about sizes that work. Let's look at the next one, another interesting one. I've got a 3 by 2 matrix multiplied by a 2 by 2. Yet again, it's legal. I end up with a 3 by 2 matrix. But what am I multiplying? I'm multiplying with a 0 matrix of an appropriate size. Now, if I multiply with a 0 matrix, here my matrix just becomes... 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0, 0, 0, 0. All the inner products are 0, so I end up with a 0 matrix. Now, you don't always end up with the same 0 matrix you multiplied with, because I multiplied with a 2 by 2 0 matrix, but I ended up with a 3 by 2. So please just take note of the size, because multiplying with a 0 matrix doesn't give you just the same 0. It gives you a 0 of an appropriate size. So take care of noticing that. All right, a couple more. Here I've got a 1, 2, 3 by 2 multiplied by a 1 row and 3 columns. Nope, not defined. Why not? Because the number of columns of my first matrix is not equal to the number of rows of my second matrix. Next one, 1 row, 3 columns, 3 rows, 1 column. All right, I can multiply those. What am I going to be left with? A 1 by 1 matrix. Notice this is very similar to finding the inner product, but it's not the same. It leaves me with a one by one matrix. All right, so I've got two minus one plus naught is one. It's a bit boring. It's one by one, but it's still a matrix. Next one, well, seems like we're doing the same thing. I've got a three by one matrix multiplied by a one by three matrix. I can multiply them. But in this case, my result is a 3 by 3 matrix. All right. So a row matrix times a column matrix gives me something small, but a column matrix times a row matrix, not necessarily. So yeah, I've got a 3 by 3 matrix. But the products are going to be very simple. Row 1, column 1, in a product of row 1 with column 1. But there's only one thing, so there's not much of a product to take. So 2 times 1 is 2. Row 1, column 2. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Row 1, column 3, 0. Row 2, column 1. So now I'm using that 1. So row 2, column 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. 1 times 0 is 0. And then row 3 times column 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. 5 times 0 is 0. So I get a 3 by 3 matrix. So always check sizes when multiplying and when doing any of these things on matrices. Now, here we have a system of linear equations. Now, there'll be another section after matrices when we look at systems of linear equations. But just to introduce it, we're not going to get that, do much work with the system now. But what I want you to notice here, I've got three linear equations in three unknowns. They're linear because the highest power of my variables, x, y, and z, are 1. And it's just linear combinations, addition and subtraction of some coefficient times that variable. So x, y, and z is what I'm after. So what I'm saying, we can use matrix multiplication to write this as an equation. So these are three separate linear equations, but together they make a system of linear equations. Now, we can write them as a matrix product. So take a look at what I'm doing, and then we're going to test if we've got it. Two minus 3, 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 3. 
Now take a look, those are the coefficients of my variables. If I multiply that with x, y, z, I actually get, and I'm going to write these numbers there shortly, but let's just see what do I get if I multiply with matrix multiplication. First row with first column would give me 2x minus 3y plus z. Second row, second column, well, second row, first column will give me x plus naught y plus z. Then the third one gives me minus x plus 2y minus 3z. Now we've got a 3 by 3 that we're multiplying with a 3 by 1. So I end up with a 3 by 1. And this is what I end up with because I'm told this first one has to be 4. This one has to be minus 2 and this one has to be 5. So now we're written a system of linear equations as a matrix equation. And when we look at the section on systems of linear equations, we're going to look at how to solve a system. So how can I use properties of matrices to solve a system of linear equations? All right, some properties. Yet again, I'm not going to go prove them. I'm not going to go through them in much detail, but just to be aware that matrix multiplication is closed and associative. It's not commutative. We saw that. We've got a multiplicative identity, naming the, na the identity matrix of the correct size. We know if I multiply a zero ma matrix with a zero matrix that I get a zero matrix out. We must just be looking at the appropriate sizes. And then we've got our distributive laws and our scalar multiple laws. You can pause, you can look at these and make sure that you're happy the, with them. So that's some properties of matrix multiplication. And one more list of properties we're going to look at is just we've defined what the transpose of a matrix is in our first video. So just go back to that one if you in part one if you can't remember. But if I transpose, let's just give one example. If my matrix A is the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then A transpose means my, this is a 2 by 3 matrix, my transpose is a 3 by 2 matrix, and every row becomes a column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the transpose. And some properties of transpose of matrices, A transpose, transpose. If I transpose that transpose again, you can see I'm going to get back to where I started. This is not a proof, it's simply an example, but it's just to illustrate these properties. The next one, the sum of the transpose of two matrices, is just the sum of the transpose of the matrices. So the transpose of the sum is the sum of the transpose, same with difference. But now with product, it doesn't work that easily. And I want you to try a couple of examples to convince yourself. But I'm just going to look at sizes. If I've got a matrix A that's a 1 by 3 matrix, and a matrix B that's a 3 by 5 matrix, I can multiply them. And that gives me some matrix that's a 1 by 5 matrix. All right. If I transpose that one, I'm going to get something that's a 5 by 1 matrix. So just keep that in mind. Now, A, B. If I look at A transpose, A transpose is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. B transpose is a 5 by 3 matrix. Can I even multiply A transpose with B transpose? I can't multiply those two. But I can find B transpose times A transpose. And that can give me a... I've got a 5 by 3 and a 3 by 1, so that's going to give me a matrix that is. I'm saying it's C, it's going to be the same, but you can check it, so let's give it another letter. That is going to give me a 5 by 1 matrix. So try it with an example or with a general matrix to convince yourself that A times B transpose is not the product of the transpose, but it's the order is switched around. So that's some properties of matrices. This was a bit of a longer one, but we need to get the multiplication sorted out.